Good morning, everybody. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. His compassions, they fail not. They are new every morning. Great is his faithfulness. Thank you for joining us today by way of our online virtual format. I'm Stanley James with Pastor True Vine Baptist Church. We are the ever-changing church with a global vision. Thank you for connecting with us today. We believe that you're going to receive a blessing from the Lord. We're getting ready now to move in, into our 100 and six year of church ministry. We are excited about what God is doing in this new season and we're excited that you have connected and sharing with us in this worship experience on this morning. The True Vine Praise Team is getting ready to usher us into the fullness of the presence of God where David says in his fullness, in his presence is the fullness of joy and I believe you're going to be blessed and we're coming back with the word right after this. Well, good morning, True Vine family and friends. It's another day that the Lord has made, and we are glad about it. Yeah, listen, I'm chasing after you, no matter what I have to do. I need you more and more. I'm chasing after you, no matter what.
Psalm 139, 23 and 24. It says, search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts and see if there be any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. In the book of Psalm 51, it says, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence and yes, yes, yes. take not thy Holy Spirit from me. I, I've learned that in this time of pandemic and social unrest that God is definitely speaking. He's speaking to us and he's warning us that it's time to put him back at number one. But in order for him to be priority in our lives, we've got to make room for him. We've got to move some things out of the way. In order for God to rule on the throne of our hearts, we've got to move some things out of the way. So wherever you are this morning, can you just say, God, I will make room for you. Come on, can you just lift that in the atmosphere this morning? God, I will make room for you. Hallelujah.
Amen. We were blessed today by that very powerful worship experience. How many of you can feel the presence and the spirit of God? It's so important even during this time of a global pandemic that we continue to connect with God. As David says, I'll keep looking to the hills from whence comes my help. All of my help comes from the Lord. I want to invite you today back into the book of Mark chapter 8. And we're going to finish up and finalize a message that we began two weeks ago. And I want you to join me, Mark chapter 8. Join me at verse number 25. Mark chapter 8, verse number 25. Mark chapter 8, verse number 25. Again, we welcome our True Vine church family. I welcome our visitors and friends, our viewing audience. Amen. Thank God for each and every one of you. We don't believe you're here by accident, but you're tuning in by the providence of God. And we believe that God has a word, amen, that he's getting ready to speak into our hearts and spirits. In Mark chapter 8, verse 25, it says, after that, he put his hands again upon his eyes and made him look up, and he was restored and saw every man clearly. And he sent him away to his house, saying, neither go into the town, nor tell it to any in the town. I want to pick up on the message uh, but I want to alter it just a bit as I want to speak to you today from the thought, deja vu too, when God flips the script. Deja vu too, when God flips the script. Last week, True Vine celebrated, commemorated 105 years of church ministry and the gospel industry. Uh, we are so excited at the powerful gifts, the powerful talents that were on array, uh, that were, again, that were performed here at True Vine. Uh, again, God's hand and God's presence and God's peace and power uh, is certainly upon this ministry. And True Vine has certainly grown uh, and grown and again has, has expanded and has gathered a more diverse market share, uh, not only in the community, but also uh, in a diverse audience of our state, of our nation, and actually even around the nation. Uh, and a matter of fact, I was kind of taken for recently a couple of months ago uh, I was looking at one of my reports and I discovered uh, that one of our books uh, was purchased from someone outside of the country and I believe today that uh, it's really fulfilling uh, the mission and the vision of True Vine. And that is why we always say uh, that we are the ever-changing church with a global vision. And so the reason why I believe that we're impacting and God is uh, enlarging our territory and expanding our impact is because that's the vision that we have been modeling and exemplifying because it is important to realize that's why it's so important to speak and confess the vision that you have for your life because remember the Bible says that death in life is in the power of the tongue and so that's why it's so important that you confess that you're saved you confess that you're healed you confess that you're blessed you confess that you're covered in the blood that you confess it because the more you say it you will begin to see what you say I said that if you continue to say it, you will begin to see what you say. Vision is important. Vision is paramount. I believe that vision is one of the principal things. It's important to realize that in the 2016 election, uh, 
58% of the registered voters actually voted in the election term. Uh, let me say that again. 58% of those who actually had were registered and who had went through the process and who had uh, given the documentations and had went through the procedures necessary to register to vote actually voted. Which means then that 42% of the people who were registered opted out of a season of impact. Did you hear what I said? I said 42% of those who could have voted, did not vote it, opted out of a season of impact. And we are now standing four years later in the results and outcome of a season where a, in a, a in large or a large demographic of people opted out of an important season in life. Listen, when you look at the statistics, um, 66.15 million people voted for Hillary Clinton. 66.1 million uh, voted for Donald Trump. As you can see, Hillary Clinton actually got more popular votes than Donald Trump, but because of how we elect our presidents, they are not elected only because of the, uh, the popular vote, but through what's called the Electoral College that's based off of the results of each state's representation. And so where I'm going with this is, is that America is the most impactful country in the world. As a matter of fact, the favor of God is on America. America is a superpower for a reason. Whenever America sets policies, it creates a domino effect around the world. Whenever America's economy shifts, all other exchange or monetary or uh, members of exchange has to shift because America has a way of setting the trend for the world. Where I'm going with this is the question becomes then how is it then that a hundred million people did not actually uh, take place in the democratic process of voting? And as I really researched it and as I really prayed and really tried to get an understanding, the Bible says in all of your getting, get an understanding. And so as I studied it, I discovered that th there really is a deeper issue with the this generation of opting out of seasons where we must participate in and that is we get to seasons in our life where we don't value the power of vision. Now, when I say vision, I'm talking about something deeper than just being able to see and being able to envision the future. Uh, but when I'm talking about vision, I'm talking about understanding my purpose. I'm talking about understanding where I am. I'm talking about understanding the impact of me going through whatever season I'm in because I realize it because as Minister Winston said last week that what we have to go through is necessary. So if I opt out of the season, what I discover is that God has a way of bringing the season back around. That's where the deja vu comes in because we keep seeing the same issues over and over. And I believe today that I'm preaching to uh, a diverse group, some people who have seen some things in this season happen over and over again. And so, but, but there comes a point in the process and in the cycle that God comes through his divine providence and flips the script. Listen, I'm so glad today that we serve a God who understands that, that there are seasons where we get tired in the process.
Has anybody ever been there? You've been going through, amen, so much, and there's so much on you, and you've been dealing with the same issues that if you're not careful, it can place pressure on your vision. As a matter of fact, that's really what glaucoma is. Glaucoma is when pressure, amen, or unusual pressure, amen, works against the eyes and causes you to lose vision. But I believe today that we're living in a time and in a season where God is flipping the script, where God is flipping our vision and God is getting us back to the place where we understand how important it is to value the things that God has valued. So as we look at this text and go back to it today, again, you remember in Mark chapter 8 that Jesus arrives in a town called Bethsaida. Uh, Bethsaida again is a town that, that's that's uh, under that's known again by the disciples because when Jesus chose his disciples, he prayed. Remember, he prayed all night before he chose them, and he elected three uh, twelve disciples, and three of them were from the town of Bethsaida. So Jesus understood everything about Bethsaida, and now in Mark's gospel chapter 8 he arrives again in Bethsaida and you remember they bring a blind man to him uh, we do not see we do not know how he got there we just see him there in the text he's blind and Jesus takes him by the hand and begin to take him on a journey and I, be, I believe today that when 2020 arrived here, that when this year arrived, 2020 is the year of vision and the year of new vision. It's important to understand that oftentimes vision begins with disruption. Uh, let me say that again. It's important to realize that vision oftentimes begins with disruption. Because when we look at the text today, Jesus takes the man by the hand and takes him on a journey that ultimately disrupts his life and plans. And I wonder, is there anybody that's watching this morning ever had your plans disrupted? Because God has a way when he needs to implement or when he needs to push his divine providence, he has a way of flipping the script so that what he planned and what he ordered and what he ordained, it's what's getting ready to happen in your life. But what I have discovered, ladies and gentlemen, is that God will sometimes allow us to walk for a season in our own scripts. And so the question comes, Pastor, what then is a script? Well, a script is a written out plan about, a matter of fact, a pre-written plan about how things are going to go. As a matter of fact, the movies that you watch on a daily basis, those movies are scripted. In other words, they already planned out in advance so that when we watch them on television, it's already scripted. And so that's why it's important to realize that there are some things in your life and my life that God has already written in the script for us to go through. But sometimes God allows us, amen, to take another path that ultimately gets us to the same destination. Amen. He allows us, but in the moving from our plans to his plans, God has to allow for disruption. And I want to talk to some people today that when it looks, when you look at your life, amen, there are some things that have been disrupted. There are some things in our plans. As a matter of fact, True Vine would not even be the church that it is today if God had not flipped the script. <laughs> 
<laughs> you do realize that there are some things that we plan, but then there are some things God plans. And sometimes, here's the question, can God make a move in your life without a memo? Uh, let me ask that again. Can God make a move in your life without a memo? Notice now in the text, let's look at it here in verse number 23 and 24. Actually in 22, the Bible says that Jesus takes the man by the hand and does not even give him a memo or doesn't even give him uh, any update, uh, a man of where they're going. And that's how you can realize that God is working on our vision. Amen. God is working on our vision because God, amen, has to ultimately take us from where we are to where he wants us to be. And in the midst of that, we're able to see three visions. We're able to see three visions, amen, that the Bible lets us in on. First of all, there is no vision. Somebody say no vision. Proverbs 29 and 18 says, where there is no vision, the people perish. In other words, when God removes us from where we are, oftentimes where we are can be a place of no vision. And so, and so, but when God starts moving in our life, and when God doesn't give you a memo, he will move you into a place and into a season that stresses you and sometimes can stretch you. And that's how you know it's a, it's, it, it's because there, there is, there is no vision, but then there is low vision, but then there is God vision. And you know that you're moving into a God vision because it seems like where you are is too much and too big for you. And somebody that's got a lot of responsibility this morning might need to take courage to know, amen, that you're right where God wants you to be. It's just that God put you in a place where you wouldn't always know that you need him. Because, beloved, when we're in a place of no vision, here it is, Bethsaida, remember, it's the hometown of Peter, James, and Andrew. It's the hometown of three of his closest disciples. Home base means it's metaphoric for their comfort zone. Listen, God knows how to get us out of our comfort zone. Because we have a way of moving into our comfort zones because when you get into a comfort zone, life gets easier. When you're in a comfort zone, you can predict what's going to happen tomorrow. When you're in a comfort zone, you're clear about your future. When you're in a comfort zone, you know what tomorrow is going to bring. Now, on the surface, that seems good, but ultimately, it does not require any faith. That's why Paul wrote in the book of Romans, he says, amen, that if you can see it, then it does not require any hope. He says, but hope that is seen, amen, is no hope, but hope that you cannot see, that's really hope. Because that kind of hope requires a trust in God. So God will sometimes move you out of the place that you're in from around the comfortable zone that you're in because it's a place, watch this, that you're not growing in. Uh, and that's why sometimes we get on a job, amen, and sometimes we get on a career path and we don't realize that there's a disruption up ahead. Uh, we, don't re we can't see them coming. This man is blind because God has a way, watch this, of blinding us to the future disruptions. Listen, no prophets could prophesy that a global pandemic was coming in 2020. I know there's a lot of prophets that are speaking in hindsight because hindsight is always 2020 and they'll tell you that they saw it coming but truth of the matter matter of the truth none of us saw this coming listen we did not see i, I see you i see you rooms full 
amen, and all of, amen, our hospital beds taken up. We did not see a year where we would have to wear masks throughout the year and stand at a six feet distance even from our loved ones. We did not envision a year where we would not have any funeral services on the inside, only grave side services. But beloved, God has a way of moving in your life without giving you a memo because when God moves and you don't, he doesn't give you a memo, it means he's got you in the process. Somebody ought to take about 15 seconds and thank God this morning because you know that God is with you because of the fact that you've been in the process, amen, and you're still alive. Amen. You've been in a pandemic and yes, you've had to make some adjustments. You've had to make some changes and alterations, but can anybody give God praise on this morning that you're still alive? You got your health and strength. Strength. You still got a job and a career. Amen. You still got faith in God. You still got hope and trust. Amen. You, he's still waking you up every morning. Amen. He's still giving you a future. He's still giving you a destiny and purpose. And we still have something to give God praise for. As a matter of fact, let's just pause for 10 seconds and take this opportunity to give God an end of the year praise even though it's not December yet. Come on, somebody, take time and give him an end of the year praise, amen, because God got you through it, amen, even when you didn't know you would be in it. But beloved, it's so important to understand today that God can flip the script in our life because, watch this, because God has a way of pinning our future, not penciling it. Let me say that again. God has a way of pinning it and not penciling it. See, the script of God is not written in pencil because pencil means I can edit it every time something happens that I don't agree with. But God has a way. He takes the man by the hand, and in the Greek tense, it's a strong take. It's almost taking the man against his will. But what he has to realize is he's now on a pathway, and God has a higher plan. And you have to realize that when God flips the script, it's going to be higher than you planned. Oh, that's somebody's word today. You got your your plans, you got your budget, you got your future, you got your stocks, you looking at it and you got it planned out and God is laughing. God is laughing because what he has for you is higher than you planned. You remember Peter fished all night, amen, and caught nothing, came back out the next morning, didn't know why he didn't catch anything, and Jesus says, listen, launch back out again, because I'm about to give you a deja vu moment, but to show you that this time, I don't want you to fish in your plan, I want you to fish in a divine plan, and I'm here to tell somebody and prophesy, some of you getting ready to fish in a divine plan. Some of you getting ready to move on a divine career path. Some of you getting ready to step into divine relationships and connections where God is getting ready to connect you with blessings and answers and miracles and resources that you didn't see coming. Watch this where every time you turn around you ought to tell your neighbor it's another blessing. Every you look to the north, the south, the east and west and God keeps Keeps blessing you over and over and over again. Would you just tell your neighbor, neighbor, it's going to be higher than you plan. Not only that, but it's going to be higher than you understand. It's going to be higher than you planned. It's going to be higher than you understand. Notice now that whenever, uh, a, 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 whenever a man 
uh, a man, uh, a sculptor, takes a man hold of a man, a vase that's on the rock, and the vase is going around in circles. His hands are always lifting it up. In other words, he's always lifting it up. And so whenever God has us in a season of transition, we're always on the way up. And even though it feels like, amen, God's hand is upon us, and it seems like there is stress and adversity, it's, in real, it's important to understand today that you're going to need a vision for it because it's going to be higher than you planned. It's going to be higher than you understand. But then and also, it's going to be higher than you can stand. Beloved, you're going to need God's vision this morning in order to see it. Because when God flips the script, he's going to shift your vision. Let me, let me, let me, let me make clear real quickly before we get out of here that a vision, here's what a vision is. A vision is what keeps us from seeing too much. See, a vision will not add things to your life. A vision cuts things out of your life. Because when you lack vision, notice now that Proverbs says, where there is no vision, the people perish. And the reason why they perish is because they, you can be in a season where you've got too many options and opportunities. You can be in a season where you've got too, too much to do. And so when you, that's why when God places a vision on your life, because notice that he takes the man from the crowd, spits on his eyes, which means that when God gives you a vision, you know it not because he adds to you, but because he subtracts. And some of you are in a subtracting season where God is taking you from people. He's taking you, amen, from processes. He's taking you from places. Amen. He's taking you from ambitions. He's taking me, watch this, from everything that will blind me from seeing his higher plan. But will somebody just declare, Lord, I'm willing and I'm ready for you to flip the script in my life? Because as a matter of fact, amen, sometimes, amen, you have to be able to know, amen, that your vision means God is going to subtract things out of your life. And when God uh, subtracts things, amen, the season is, is flipped. The, 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 the script gets flipped. The script gets flipped. And so when God scripts the flip, amen, let me give you three points that's important to understand that when God flips the script, amen, it's going to be important for you to be able to do three things that God has given you this power to do when he was taking you through. And that is, number one, you're going to need to be able to manage your expectations. You're going to have to manage your expectations. All of us have expectations about how our life would be. As a matter of fact, most of us are married this morning to people that we didn't expect we would be married to. As a matter of fact, would you just look at your loved one this morning and just tell them, honey, I always knew it would be you. <laughs> and now I'm going to give you 10 seconds to go ahead on and repent for just telling that story because none of us knew or expected we would be married. So as a matter of fact, we're used to having the script flipped. Because, as a matter of fact, most of us are in a life, most of us are in a city, most of us are on a career path, most of us are on a job that we did not start out on. But we changed trajectories because God had written it in the script. Remember, Jesus said, he said, behold, I come in the volume of the book because it is written of me. In other words, Jesus was saying, I came in the script that God has for me. And so ultimately what that means is if we're going to be able to adjust, we got to be able to manage our expectations. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 4, uh, verse 23, it says, guard your heart 
with all diligence because out of it flows the issues of life. Guarding your heart means that we have to manage our expectations because all of us have expectations and sometimes the, 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 the disappointment and the frustration of life comes from unmanaged expectations. We expected that if we did this, that by now we would have results. We expected that, right, that by now we would have a certain outcome. And so ultimately, we expect things that we shouldn't expect. As a matter of fact, I was watching a documentary of Tiger Woods, and part of his comeback, part of his deja vu moment happened when he came back, when we, because when he first came back, he continued to lose and play on a low level. And ultimately, he couldn't find out, he couldn't discover why he could not break through to the win, but ultimately what he discovered is that he had, watch this, to lower his expectations. Beloved, lowering your expectations does not mean you give up hope in God. It just means you are adjusting your expectations because you're not always in a winning season. So you've got to be able to go through highs and lows, valleys and mountains on your way to where God is taking you. Because whenever God is leading you, it's going to feel like he's leaving you. And when God leaves you, you got to be able to manage your expectations. So I can't put, I can't, some things I can't expect any longer because what, I've got to manage my expectations. I may have to lower my expectations. I may have to change my expectations. And maybe that's somebody's word today that, listen, God is getting ready to flip the script on your future, but God said, it may not happen the way you expect it to happen. This man got his miracle, but it did not happen the way he expected. And maybe somebody is receiving courage this morning because now you realize God can get you there, amen, from another point. God can get you there from another path, but I've got to first of all manage my expectation. Because if you don't manage your expectations, watch this, you will try to force your script on God. You will try, amen, to force your timing. But can I tell you this this morning as we get ready hey, to get out of here? Listen, listen, God has a set time of favor. Did you hear what I said? I said God has a set time of favor. Because if you try to push the vision of, of, for your life too soon, then sometimes it can reveal that it's your ambition rather than God's vision. And so God says you've got to manage your expectations and know that there is a right time and there is a wrong time. And, and, and that's why i got to be able to say like Isaiah, I'm going to wait on the Lord because they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. Would you tell your neighbor, neighbor, manage your expectations. Manage your expectations. Here, here's the second one. Number two, maintain your momentum. Please know that, that, that when you're going through, amen, don't allow what you're going through to shape or stop your momentum. Listen, I, and what this word is just saying to somebody, that even in the midst of a global pandemic, listen, get ready for 2021. Listen, listen, don't allow the pandemic to stop your plans and your vision. Somebody was getting ready to go back to college. God is, so your word is coming to you to tell to maintain your momentum. Somebody was getting ready, amen, to make a move in your relationship. God is saying, listen, maintain your momentum because the pandemic, just because the pandemic came does not mean it changed God's script. See, the reason why it is a divine script is because a human script can be changed. But when God writes your vision, 
When God writes your destiny, not even a pandemic can change it. How do you know? Because, beloved, when Jesus went to the cross, when Jesus went to Calvary, not even death and the grave could change the fact that he was raised on the third day. I'm just trying to tell somebody that, listen, maintain your momentum. Listen, when Joseph went into Egypt, please remember. Remember that Joseph had two children in Egypt named Manasseh and Ephraim. In other words, he was fruitful in a strange place. What does that mean? He maintained his momentum. And I want to tell somebody, just because you feel stuck doesn't mean you are stuck. Would somebody help me preach this morning? Listen, just because you look stuck doesn't mean you are stuck. Just because you feel stuck does not mean you are stuck. You ought to just get ready and tell somebody, I'm getting ready to come out of this. I'm coming out with a better life. I'm coming out with a stronger life. I'm coming out, amen, with a wiser life. Would somebody just give God praise and shout, I'm coming out of it. I'm coming out of it. But you've got to maintain your momentum. I need you to tell your neighbor that's in there with you this morning, maintain your momentum. Maintain your confidence. Maintain your faith in God. Amen. Maintain your hope. Amen. The Bible says be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding. In the Lord. All that means is maintain your momentum. Amen. Because God is not finished with you yet. It's not over until God says it's over. So you've got to manage your expectations. You've got to maintain your momentum. Here's the final one. Number three, marry your hesitations. Marry your hesitations. Jesus took the man by the hand, touched him, spit on his eyes, asked him if he, if he saw anything different. And he said, I see men as trees walking. He began to see better, but he wasn't focused. And so Jesus touched him again, asked him to look up. And this time he looks up with expectancy, but hesitancy. And that's how you know that God has flipped the script in your life is when you're moving in a season where you understand you've got to pray before every move you make. Because when you were in your vision, amen, you made moves without asking God. But now you have hesitancy. Now, notice we don't go to the stores now. We're kind of hesitant to go to the store. We're kind of hesitant to get gas. We're kind of hesitant, amen, to eat out. We're hesitant in things that we used to be sure about. And that lets you know God has flipped the script. And he has us in a season where we have to realize, Lord, I need you. And I cannot make it without you. Can anybody lift your hand this morning and say, now, Lord, listen, I needed you all the time. But now that you disrupted my life, now that you took me on a journey and you took me from a comfortable place to a place where now I've got to trust you each and every day, where I've got, to, I've got to cry out to you each and every day, now I know that I need you like never before. Beloved, can I tell somebody today and encourage you, listen, God is getting ready to flip that. Yes, that circumstance, that, that problem that you had, that you hadn't been able to solve. God is getting ready to flip it. Because remember, we were on our way to hell. We were on our way to death. But Jesus Christ went to Calvary. Jesus went to the cross and flipped our destiny. We did not have a future. Because the Bible says all have sinned, come short of the glory of God.
We were doomed to death because the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. But thank God that Jesus says, I'll come and I'll go in the script. I'll go in the script. It's written of me. And I'm going to flip humanity's script. Now all that put their trust in me can have a new future. Beloved, how many of you know it's going to work out for your good? It's getting ready to turn in your favor. One day I was watching a Batman episode when I was very young. And my older brother, he always had a way of being confident. And I wanted to know, I wanted to know how was it that every week he always knew that Batman would be all right. And one day as I got older, he finally told me the secret. He said, the reason why I know and I'm always confident and I know that no matter whether they're suspended over a bridge, suspended over alligators, suspended over a river, amen, I always know that on the next episode, everything is going to be all right. He says, because it's written in the script. Somebody doesn't know this morning that, listen, we might be going through uncertainty, but our future is written in the script. Jesus says, I'll never leave you and never forsake you. Somebody that suffered loss, somebody that's all alone this morning, listen, God is on your side. Listen, God says, I'll never leave you and never forsake you. And there may be somebody out there today that doesn't realize or has lost their sense of hope and vision. But we're getting ready to pray. And I want you to believe God like never before. Maybe there's somebody that's never accepted Jesus as your personal Savior. I just want you to ask him into your heart, into your life, and watch God work it out. Pray this prayer, Father, in the name of Jesus, I've sinned and come short of your glory. But Father, I heard that your word today is saying that if I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in my heart, God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Father, we believe, we believe today that if you have prayed this prayer, then you are saved and reconnected. And listen, we want you to reach out, amen. We want you to become a part of a covenant, become a part of a Bible-believing church, amen. Just go to truevine.org slash connect and put in your information and it is the key to the next chapter and see season in your life. Beloved, listen, get ready for God to flip the script. If he's did it before, he's able to do it again. We know that you were blessed by their powerful message today, and we're certainly moving into a new season, and we're excited to have each and every one of you with us, our True Vine Church family and surrounding communities. And we want to pause at this time to thank God for our entire church family for our uh, church anniversary expressions on last week. Uh, what a powerful, dynamic service. What a powerful word uh, by Minister Jonathan Winston. Amen. We were all blessed and celebrated in in a powerful way. Thank every ministry. Again, we thank our, our committee. Uh, we thank again everybody for their contributions. Amen. For your prayers and amen everyone for your expressions and how this was such a powerful expression uh, of the True Vine gifting and the True Vine Church family. Also, we want to take time also today uh, because again, fourth Sunday was church anniversary. We did not have the proper time to thank God for all of the October birthdays and would you just stand up where you are and just take a bow we thank God for each and every one of you uh, we're remembering you on your birthday uh, on today thank God for every October 
October gift in a man, the family of Truvine. Happy birthday to each and every one of you. And certainly we cannot leave here today without uh, knowing the significance and the importance that's, gonna ha that's, going, that's happening on next week. This coming Tuesday, we have a an, an life-changing a life-changing vote that we must go to the polls because I believe that the word that came today was God's word that what he's getting ready to do, amen, through our vote, God is getting ready to flip the script. But we have to go out and vote. We cannot have an election where another hundred million people opt out of their responsibility. But I believe today that we're going to go out in powerful numbers and on Tuesday night, amen, by the time we wake up Wednesday morning, the script will be flipped. And we just ought to thank God in advance. We don't need to wait until we see it, amen. We can thank God in advance. Beloved, thank you all for joining us today, amen. We look forward to seeing you again on next week at the same time, amen, at the same place, amen. Until then, amen, be blessed. Amen.